going on, Ribmaster here, and welcome back to the Cardinal Castles video. Today, we are going to be going into the Warlock cards, uh, going into like a review kind of video for uh, the new Dwarves and Dinosaurs cards, of course, in the Warlocks. Now, I did not make this video as earlier as I should have. Um, I probably should have made it with everything else coming out the same day, but, you know, I, I couldn't get it made, and um, now that I actually have the time, actually this is a little bit better, seeing as how the expansion itself is probably about two, maybe going on three weeks old. So, it gives me a bit more insight into how some of the cards have turned out as a whole. So, um, yeah, with that being said, we'll jump right into our first card, which will be... Defective Flame Cannon. Now, the Flame Cannon is kind of a silly card, in my opinion. Um, dealing two damage to the castle um, while you're dealing three to your, or mm, sorry about that. Dealing two damage to an enemy that could mean maybe castle, maybe uh, op, uh, enemy unit, building, etc. Uh, but however, you're dealing three damage to your own castle. So this has a very big drawback to it because, um, well, taking three damage away is taking about one. Uh, a quarter of your castle's health away for two damage. Uh, the cost is very val you know, very low at only one, and it is a common card. So, I I haven't seen this card play too much. There has been some burn decks going around incorporating this as a very early damage card, and I can see that. Uh, seeing as how with burn decks you're not letting your opponent touch your castle, so you're allowed to take that damage. Um, however, it just seems like a very big risk, you know, the risk does not equal the reward here, seeing as how it's only two damage, something that you could do easily with another unit, you know, why waste the gold and the health just for that two damage. Uh, however, in a burn deck, uh, of course, you know, I could see this, oh, sorry about that, going uh, different ways, so uh, with that being said, uh, I'll probably jump into the next card, which will be... Arcfire. Now, Arcfire is a very uh, unique card in terms of uh, damage here. Uh, of course, it deals 4 damage for 2 gold. That's amazing. However, you have to have a mage in play. So, you're not going to get this damage too early, seeing as how mages tend to cause within 3, 4 gold. Um, actually, no, scratch that. There's a mage apprentice that costs 2 gold. But, you know, still. There's no mage that costs 1 gold, so it's not an easy transition. Um, but dealing 4 damage is amazing. It has the ability of, you know, basically like this is a mini incinerate. However, again, you have to have mage in play. So I could definitely see, um, maybe a mage burn coming up in the future. However, we haven't seen this card big, you know, we haven't seen a big impact from this card. That's the proper terminology here. Um, I could, and I could see why people may not be able to pack in a mage for this damage, so having a card that forcibly relies off another card is a bit difficult. It's sort of, it's sort of like the dwarves in a sense, you know, where you have all their spells require dwarves in play. This is, this is the same technology here. Um, however, at, so for, I guess for some, it's just not worth it for uh, warlocks, because there, are, again, are other damage options that are more suitable uh, than arc fire. Not to say that arc fire has some weak damage output. Four damage is a very nice uh, number to work with. So, uh, but yeah, haven't seen this card played as uh, you know much at all. So I, it's sort of hard to give any sort of opinion on it. You know, even this late in the expansion, not a lot going on with this card, and that can tell you something. So with that being said, we can move right into. Death Touch. Now, Death Touch is a great card in terms of an ability. Uh, we haven't seen things like this in the Warlock faction yet. Uh, for three gold, you're choosing an enemy unit and destroying it on your next turn. I think this is a very useful card and some that people probably should start running more of. You know, I've seen it used and I'm surprised it hasn't seen more action, I guess, because maybe it's its epic rarity and maybe a lot of people have not been able to claim that yet. But again, great card and a great power. It's basically like an, a very early murder, a very early assassin. Uh, things that you know maybe pop out that you're not expecting. Maybe a a big buffed unit on turn three, and you're like, "Whoa, I can't deal with this until like I have my murder." And by then, the opponent could have already won. Uh, Death Touch is a great counter to that. Um, so uh, again. It's just an overall powerful card, in my opinion. Uh, 
and hopefully maybe we'll see more of that in use in the future. So, um, yeah, with that being said, we can move into our next card. Magmasaur. Woo! What a card. Uh, Magmasaur is an incredibly powerful card to run in this day and age, simply because it's ability to uh, synergize with so many of the other dino cards that it becomes an unstoppable monster. Um, Magmasaur has really been played alongside at least maybe one baby dino a turn to bring it up to a 2-4. Um, but usually Dino Nest comes in and makes it a ridiculous number, like 5-7, seven, 7-9. Seven, well, I think one of those two. Uh, but as you can see, the card, it, you know, at a low cost, too, it only costs three gold, one less than the Southport Cannoneer, so that explosive can come out a turn earlier. Um, he's got the two movement, he's got a one attack, but again, like I said, two explosive, three health, so hopefully it disintegrates. If you have one, just use it. Uh, get rid of Magmasaur really quickly because he will cause trouble. And again, that dinosaur tag is important due to the synergy, uh, synergization. I'm going to make that word. Um, you know, he can work so well with dinosaurs, uh, other dinosaurs, like, uh, again, the Dino Nest. He can play alongside T-Rexes maybe to go on a, uh offense. You know, things that he can do, uh, you know, even away from Dinos too, people throw him in because, you know, they like the power that Magmasaur brings to the table. So, it really says a lot about a card when it's designated archetype. You know, it's supposed to be in Dino decks, but it transfers into so many other decks, so... You know, that, with that being said, I think we've touched up on Magmasaur. Uh, again, very powerful card. But let's move on into Blaze. Now, Blaze is another one of the Warlock cards that have seen a lot of action since release. Um, for 4 gold, you get to deal 2 damage to enemies in a 3x3 three three area. Uh, pretty good for the Warlocks. Um, we get that 3x3 three three, uh, area damage, which is nice. Uh, it's technically a more expensive shrapnel grenade if you think about it. Um... But again, the blade isn't that bad because this one can target Castle as well, so that's another thing to consider. Um, has been effective in taking out some hordes of clumped units, so there's uh, that to look at uh, when looking at Blaze. Um, and overall, I think when people play at the right time, it can just hurt so bad. Like, not so bad, but it can, you know, be a pain in the ass when it comes out because it really can throw off uh, plans or you know, just ruin your day, ruin your day in general. Um, so, yeah, that's that's Blaze in a small nutshell there, so we can move on into Fire World. Fire World is the last uh, Warlock card of the new set. Um, it kind of goes back to the old Fire World that we had, uh, well, I don't know if, it, I don't remember if it was exactly called Fire World, uh, but we had a card similar to this back in the olden pre-Monster Island days. Um, so, with this one, you choose a friendly unit and deal 3 damage to enemies nearby. Uh, pretty nifty. I haven't really seen this thing in too much action uh, as of now. Um, some people, I assume, have tried to use it to a good extent. Um, and it's like a cheaper ignition, if you think about it, but without the rebounds. So. And this one deals one more damage. So that's just something to consider. It gives like a uh, competitor to uh, ignition if you run that. Or even, no... Dark fire, but dark fire is definitely a stronger choice to the higher damage output. So, yeah, that's something to consider. Uh, but yeah, with that um, card, that really completes it all for warlocks uh, in this new set. Not a whole lot of cards to go over, uh, but still cards to go over nonetheless. Uh, I will be making a neutral card and ninja card review um, later in the upcoming days. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but with that being said, yeah, that pretty much ends, uh, concludes the video. So if you guys did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like, share with your friends, and comment down below what you think of the Warlock cards, uh, even though you probably have already said what you like or don't like about the Warlock cards. Um, and if you are new to the channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. That's the only thing you, uh, guys have to do to support the channel, just click the subscribe button. No cost whatsoever. And of course, use code REDMASTER to f uh, gain five free card packs uh, if you haven't used a code already. So, with that being said, guys, until the next video, stay gaming.